In this video, I want to talk about the earnings reports performance for Q3 2019 and Q4 2019. Now, as we know, COVID started in the first quarter of this year. And in fact, uh, the results of the first quarter, which was, uh, you know, which would have ended in March, and then the results would have started coming out in the middle of April, uh, that got cut short. And so we did not do an earnings season report service in uh, for the first quarter of this year at all as there was too much uncertainty at that time covid had just come in and uh, we had no we had no idea of what kind of impact however now going into q2 we have a very good idea of how the earnings season is going to look like because this would be an earnings quarter which had the full impact of the covid so as as you can expect there probably going to be a lot more uh, surprises to the downside and, and that's great because it can give you some enormous opportunities and so that's what we're going to focus on uh, in this uh, you know in this earnings uh, report service in, in uh, for the upcoming quarter which is uh, quarter two now what I want to talk about in this video is how we did in the previous two that we did so first I'll be looking at the Q4 of 2019 and so the Q4 ended in uh, December 31st and then the earnings service uh, starts uh, started on um, Jan 15th or so and then it ran into the middle of Feb and that's what we can expect this time also we're going to start in the middle of July and it's going to go into the middle of August uh, we took a total of about 11 trades and 10 of them were outright winners and one was a trade uh, one trade was a break even so this was very very good performance we did better than the Q3 of 2019 and I'll you'll be seeing the Q3 video right after this one uh, so the total profit on, from these 11 trades was about 15,900 and all these trades are based on approximately a 10 contract size position. So we take various strategies whether it is uh, a credit spread or a debit spread or an iron condo but most of the time it is based on a 10 contract size and this is what we can expect uh, obviously each person can choose their own uh, contract sizes but in terms of the service it will look at it as a 10 contract size with a budget uh, or uh, you know somewhere around uh, $30,000 so that would be the total capital outlay uh, for this and of course you might have other trades going on besides the uh, earning service but I would recommend that you keep about anywhere between 20 and 30k uh, for this uh, earning service let's now look at the actual trades that we did in q4 2019 uh, the we started out with ibm and uh, we did about 600 dollars microsoft was a good trade 2600 chipotle mexican grill, grill was very good at 3000 uh, shopify google uh, apple uh, goldman sachs facebook netflix and nvidia so these were the all the profitable trades the only trade that was a break even was baba now granted uh, some of them most of them actually when you as soon as you put the trade they become profitable and you know it's a good strategy and it works very well on one or two I believe we had to do some adjustments I think it was uh, Facebook and Netflix were a couple of those and maybe Nvidia and uh, so we, we do the adjustment so as part of the service you're going to get all the initial trades uh, the rationale behind it and what is the strategy you know whether we are taking advantage of expanding uh, volatility or contracting volatility or time decay and we will suitably uh, choose the uh, expiry series as well as the strike prices and all of that and if it doesn't work very well for the earnings uh, event then we will have to adjust those trades and that's what the whole service is all about and we'll try to turn them around and in fact we did turn around most of them except for Alibaba which was a break even so now after this you're going to see the Q3 2019 uh, performance in this video itself. In this video, I want to talk about the Q3 2019 earnings performance. So there were a total of 16 trades between mid of October and some of the a couple of the trades went on into middle of December as well. There were 12 winners, three losers and one break even. The winners totaled to 12,475 and the losers and break even was exactly negative 2000. So the net performance was 10,475 and this was all done on an average of about 10 contracts. And so the account size would be somewhere between a 25,000 to $30,000 account. 
you can do for less as well you can you don't have to do 10 contracts you can do two contracts or three contracts and obviously you can do it with a lesser account size but i'm just saying i was assuming about a thirty thousand uh, dollar account size and we went about 10 contracts now these trades don't generally last for very long because we put it either a few days before the earnings event and then once the earnings event is over we are most likely going to take it off now of course if the earnings report that did not match the trade alignment and then we have to adjust the trades that will what will take the trades a little bit longer and we had a couple of those with Expedia and CRM and we, and we were trying to come back to break even uh, on those two trades we were not able to but most trades generally get over between I would say five to ten days and so you're not using all your capital at one time uh, you're generally spacing out your capital because even the earnings announcements are not all together uh, many stocks start at the beginning of the season and then it goes on for it goes on for actually a good couple of months and so your capital is being used only on a limited level at any given time these are all the actual trades that we took we started with netflix that was a great trade and it was over within a couple of days or so we did about 1450 the next trade ibm went down and then of course we did uh, trades on uh, chipotle mexican grill visa google microsoft facebook shopify qualcomm and actually we had a great winning streak right there and then tesla was a tough trade we brought it back to break even and expedia and crm were the true trades that we had to hold and adjust for quite a while and uh, they still ended up as losers but uh, the positions improved substantially from where it was expedia particularly was a problem because expedia's expected move was plus or minus uh, eight or nine points and expedia got hammered by 35 dollars it went down by 35 dollars after the earnings event so these kinds of extreme events also can happen earnings reports are generally a speculative event but when you look at it from the option standpoint you can strategize and you can create strategies simply out of time decay and the volatility explosion and the ensuing implosion or the volatility crush and so most of the trades that went well are all incorporating these strategies all of these are discussed in the earnings max product